Your Credit Matters segment right now, brought to you by rsrdebtfree.com, rsrdebtfree.com. If you have more than 60 days worth of bills, you can't pay them off. Have you explored options for yourself, for your family to see if it's better? Are you open-minded enough to see what's out there? Well, one option could be the debt consolidation loan from our friends at Geneva Financial. If you've got equity in your property, the debt consolidation loan might be the right answer. RSR2step.com, RSR2step.com. We'll walk you right through that. If you don't have the equity in your property, and I hope you know the numbers because we can share that with you, but our friend Chris Corrales might have a solution for you. Just saw someone the other day get $91,000 worth of student loan debt wiped out. So there's public student loans, private student loans. And again, I don't know all the, the particulars of all of these things. I just know that if you put your head in the sand, then you will not find a solution there. Just throwing that out there for you. Let's take a look and see what our report says, how to verify debt collection accounts. Debt collectors can contact you in more ways than ever, phone, email, text message, and even on social media. With so many clever scammers out there, it can be hard to know whether a debt collector is legitimate. Even if the debt collector turns out to be real, you can't always be sure the debt is valid. Collection agencies have gotten in trouble with the FTC for using questionable tactics to collect money from consumers. Being able to spot the red flags can help you verify debt collection accounts and avoid paying a scammer. Ask for debt validation. Write to the debt collector asking for proof of the debt. The debt collector must reply back with certain basic information like the amount you owe and the name of the original creditor. Until the collector sends proof that the debt is valid, they're not allowed to make collection attempts, which includes reporting the debt to a collection agency. Once you receive validation from the debt collector, carefully review the documents they've sent. They're required to itemize what you owe, including the original past due balance, plus any interest, fees, payments, and credits. Check if the amount owed matches what you believe you owe by accessing old billing statements and check if the debt is actually yours. Verify the debt is legally collectible. Ask for the last date of activity on the account and be sure the debt is not beyond the statute of limitations for your date, for your state. Whenever you communicate with the debt collector, whether by phone or another method, be careful not to say anything that could reset the statute of limitations or validate the debt, which includes making a payment or promise to pay, entering a payment arrangement, or acknowledging ownership of the debt. Debt collectors may not proactively offer this information, but if you ask for it, they're required to tell you the truth. Note that an expired statute of limitation does not forbid a debt collector from calling you about a debt. It may, however, offer a possible defense against any legal action a collector tries to take against you. Depending on the amount and age of the debt, you may consider consulting with a consumer protection attorney to get more information about your rights and options. Check the collector's licensing. If you're trying to figure out whether a company is real, researching the collection agency online is a good place to start. A legitimate collection agency will have a website at an address that matches the company name. Check for a profile with the Better Business Bureau, but note that most collection agencies do not have stellar BBB ratings. Most states require debt collectors to be licensed and insured in order to operate. Check the nationwide multi-state licensing system to verify the debt collector's license. You can also check with your state's Secretary of State and Department of Insurance to verify whether a debt collector meets the requirements to do business in your state. What to do if you're a scam victim, if you believe you're targeted by a scammer. You can file a complaint with the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, and your state attorney general. With enough complaints and damages, the FTC may file a lawsuit against the scammers and try to recover any money that was part of the scam. Make sure to get a copy of your credit report. You can do that in one of two ways. If you want just the report itself, annualcreditreport.com, you can get a copy every week. And it'll have the three different bureaus on there, annualcreditreport.com. If you want to be sure that you're getting monitoring your credit and getting the real mortgage FICO scores, well, then what you need to do is go to cleanall3.com, cleanall3.com. 
mortgagefico.com and you can actually get a copy of your uh, mortgage FICO score. Now, I'm, I'm hearing this more and more, so be careful. Know what you're looking at. Cleanall3.com is going to give you a legitimate mortgage FICO score. There are different uh, places, including your bank, where they're going to say, well, here's your Experian score. Experian score is not a FICO score. Experian is a component of what goes into the FICO. FICO will get information from Experian and generate a score from that. But an Experian score is not necessarily a FICO score. Similarly, a lot of times I've seen, and I've seen this coming up recently, we'll see that there's a, a, a FICO eight model 8 comes up. And yes, that is a FICO score, but it's not a FICO mortgage score. FICO has all kinds of scores, mortgage scores, general scores, uh, credit card scores, auto scores, all different ones. So you want to make sure that you're getting the right score for what your purpose is. That is Your Credit Matters, brought to you by rsrdebtfree.com, rsrdebtfree.com.